Hi guys, welcome to another teardown video. Today I want to touch on a really cool switch design called the Void Switch by a user called Riskable, who's the most maniacal 3D printing enthusiast I've ever seen. The switches are based on the design of old magnetic separation switches, or MagSep switches as I call them. I featured AT&T MagSeps in a teardown video a while ago, which was a very interesting type of foam and foil switch equipped with a magnet that caused a tactile and clicky event. The name magnetic separation is a bit of a misnomer, as it's actually more of a magnetic attraction switch, but hey, I didn't name the damn thing. These switches by Riskable use the same concept, except they're 3D printed rather than injection molded, and they use an additional levitator magnet, which is more of an actual magnetic separator. The AT&T ones use a coil spring for separation instead. Anyway, to distinguish the two, I call these maglevs for magnetic levitation. They use three magnets. One is in the slider, one is in the housing, and the third is held under the keycap. The ones in the slider and housing are positioned to attract each other, and if you press the switch, you separate the two from each other. When they get separated, the magnets can't attract each other as strongly, so the switch gives in a bit, and this is what causes the tactile event. The attraction also causes the switch to close again when you let go. To assist in pushing the slider back up though, the third magnet is added, and this is the levitator which is held in a small piece of plastic just under the keycap. This is set to repel the magnet in the housing, and so when you push down the key, the attraction between the lower two magnets decreases, but the repulsion between the top ones increases. This replaces the coil spring present in the AT&T MagSep switches, and is one of the characteristic differences between MagSep and MagLev switches. The other thing that sets these apart is that they're 3D printed. Now, this allows for a ridiculous amount of fine tuning and nearly endless possibilities. For example, you can choose any keycap mount you want, or print the keycaps yourself, as is the case here. You can change the total travel, as is shown by these ridiculous 15mm travel ones he made for me. Also, they're hot swappable. Plus, the thickness of the layer between the attracting magnets can be changed to tune the tactility. Now, because magnets attract more strongly the closer they are to each other, the more material you interpose between them at rest, the weaker the tactility is. Here it shows the thickness of the plastic between the two magnets in millimeters, and he made a bunch of testers where you can see this. So this one, with almost two millimeters between the magnets, is a really only very weakly tactile, while this one, with no spacing at all, is is extremely tactile. <laughs> you can probably see it is really just all the way up or all the way down. It's way, way more tactile than something like box navies, for example. It might be the most tactile switch I've ever tried. In other words, it has kind of analog tactility. The fact that you can make switches of any travel and pretty much any tactility is just amazing in my opinion. It's really next gen. And it's contactless as well, mind you. The sensing for these is also analog, by the way. It's based on the Hall effect. It detects the distance of the bottom magnet to the sensor. In order to work properly, it needs to calibrate, which apparently it does automatically as well. Again, really cool stuff. Oh yeah, and uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> You can also get dampened ones where there is a sheet of plastic between the keycap and the housing. It definitely makes a difference in sound, and it's a very simple solution. I think this is one of the most brilliant, elegant, and promising designs I've seen in a long time, to be honest. I'm really looking forward to how this project unfolds. Overall, the switch consists of seven parts, two parts housing, the slider, three magnets, and the levitator holder, which means it's kind of middle complexity. That's it for this video, and see you next time.